by special recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, a Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Here's the Lone Ranger. A long time ago, a man fought an enormous animal bigger than an elephant. When I found the bones of that animal in the desert, I realized that size alone doesn't always win. That little man must have prepared himself to conquer the monster. He must have known, even in those days, that champions are made, not born. And that's still true today. Anyone hoping to become a champion needs lots of energy to sharpen his skills and to back those skills with power. Right, Lone Ranger. One of the big reasons champions choose Wheaties is for energy to help them get on their way. It's easy to see where that energy comes from when you know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Friends, keep in mind this advice from the Lone Ranger. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Trail City had become an outlaw town. When bad men killed the third town marshal within a year, the town council, headed by Dr. McCracken, arranged to hire Jack Haskell, the most feared law officer in the West. Hugo Galt, a member of the council, was secretly the leader of the territory's worst outlaw band. When the council made its decision over his protest, he met secretly with his two lieutenants, Cliff Dexter and Cal Bentley. He warned them of the marshal's coming and said, Haskell arrives on the stagecoach from St. Joe next Tuesday morning. Uh, that's the day we're supposed to hold up the bank. I know. That's why you boys will have to see the Haskell doesn't get here. You have a plan of some sort, boss? Yes, always. Can you fellas get a girl who's ready and able to put on a sweet thing act? I think so. Marion Leslie, she's a hostess at the Case 8 Cafe, and, well, she's a friend of mine. What do you want her to do? I'll tell you. The last stop the St. Joe stage makes before reaching Trail City is the relay station north of here. Yeah, about two hours riding cross country and three hours on the road. Right. Stage is due here at eight in the morning. Now, Cliff, if you and, uh, say, that gunslinger Django Hewitt go to the relay station during the night and take this girl with you... I think we may be able to handle Jack Haskell. Yeah? Now, here's what you do. The Lone Ranger and Toto reached the outskirts of Trail City on the evening before Jack Haskell's scheduled arrival there. They camped in the nearby hills. The Lone Ranger removed his mask, affected the simple disguise of a cowhand, and mounted his horse. He's used to the big fellow. Otto, we're going to learn firsthand whether or not Trail City's as bad as they say it is. Monsieur! Off scout! The Lone Ranger, in his cowboy disguise, had seen many known bad men in his rounds of the cafes that evening. Now, nearing midnight, 
While Toto waited near an alley to the side of the building, the Lone Ranger entered the Case 8 Cafe. He ordered a drink, carried it to a side table, and left the glass untouched before him. Then, without seeming to do so, he began to study the men in a crowded cafe. He saw two familiar figures at the end of the bar. And though he pretended unconcern, he kept his attention focused on them. Cliff Dexter, Django Hewitt, they would end up in Trail City. The Lone Ranger had known the two men to be notorious criminals in Missouri a few years earlier. He continued to watch them. But during the next half hour, they were joined by another bad man whom he recognized. Cal Bentley. Hmm, what a combination that is. When a girl joined the trio, their manner and subsequent actions caused him to leave the cafe and hurry to where Toto waited. Quickly, he told the Indian of the three outlaws and the girl. He concluded. And Toto, after the girl seemingly sneaked out the rear door, Cliff Dexter and Django Hewitt left in the same manner. But Cal Bentley stayed behind us. Yes, but when I left, I'm sure he was ready to follow the others. And not come out this way. Let's stay in the shadows and go back there. Perhaps we'll get some idea of what they're doing. Otto, there they are on the horses near the stable. Listen, you can hear what they're saying. Cliff, while you and Jango ride there with Marion, I'll go to the boss's place and wait till dawn. You'll meet the rest of the gang then, Carl. Yeah. I'll go right to the hideout. What about you and Jango? We ride back and meet you there as soon as we finish our part of the job. Good. You want to be sure that... Ah, here she is. Whoa, oh, there, boy. Oh. I'm ready, fellas. You sure change clothes quick. Marion, be sure to do your act like we told you. Don't worry about me, Cal. Are you two ready? Yeah, let's go, Jango. We'll take the back trail out to the crossroads. Right. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Get up. You heard? Uh, sound like them plan something bad. There's no doubt about that. We follow him? No. Wait. There goes Bentley in the opposite direction. You follow him, Toto. Try to find out who the boss is. Also about the gang and the hideout. Uh, you go after others? Yes, I'll be able to pick up their trail at the crossroads. Toto, we'll meet at camp later. Uh, horses in front of cafe, Kimasabi. All right, let's go. Uh. The Lone Ranger, wearing his mask, set out in pursuit of Marion Leslie and the two crooks. The giant striding silver covered the distance rapidly. Easy, Silver, easy. When the Lone Ranger reached the crossroads, he could see the trio in front of him. The masked man followed at a distance without being seen by them. Come on, Silver. Masked man kept the man and girl in sight for more than three hours. Who's over? Who? Finally, they stopped a short distance from the site of the stagecoach relay station. After a brief conversation, the girl left them and rode on to the structure. Oh, that's strange. Escorting her all the way out here. I wonder why. He saw the two men turn their horses off the trail and ride a short distance into the hills that rose behind the relay station. Hmm, they're dismounting. Silver, they're up to something, and you can be sure it's not good. Easy now. Let's get near them. All right, big fella. Come on. Oh, hurry, boy! Oh, oh. The stagecoach from St. Joseph arrived at the relay station on schedule. We'll be here for ten minutes. There's coffee and buns inside. Oh, thanks, Greg. All right. All right. Marion Leslie, in her riding outfit, had searched the faces of the passengers who left the stagecoach and headed for the nearby shack. She had been given a description of Jack Haskell by Cliff Dexter, and there was no mistaking the renowned gunfighting marshal as he emerged from the coach. Marion, assuming an air of great secrecy, hurried to the man. Oh, please, don't go inside. What? You're Jack Haskell, aren't you? Uh, well, Dr. McCracken sent me here to meet you. Dr. McCracken? What about it? I'm his daughter. Daddy's waiting for you up in the hills behind the station. Why? I can't answer you because I don't know. Oh, Marshal, I think Daddy's in danger. He says he can't chance being seen here. It's, it's something about outlaws he wants to see you about before you go to Trail City. It's very important. Very, very important. Uh, well, all right. I am Jack Haskell. 
Let's go to where your father's waiting. Oh, no, not yet, please. Wait until the stagecoach leaves. Well, what is this? Why should we wait until... Marshal, Daddy... Daddy said that part's very necessary. Now, he has a horse for you. You can ride back to Trail City. Whatever it is that's happened, believe me, Daddy will need your help. Jack Haskell, though usually wary, was completely disarmed by the girl's sincere manner and her knowledge of his supposed secret visit. He went to the stagecoach driver and advised the man to go on without him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. True, champions are made, not born. We can all get there if we try. Take champion Doak Walker, flashy halfback for the Detroit Lions. Doak, at the tender age of nine, decided football was his line. He practiced hours day after day and learned what champions have to say. Wheaties for breakfast, you're on your way. Now a touchdown team from top to toe, Walker and Wheaties, they really go. A guy can put away a lot of Wheaties in 18 years, and that's how long Doak Walker's been eating them. Good for you? There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Let's go, Doak. Dig for that goal. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. to continue. Get there! Get Haskell and the girl watched the stagecoach leave for Trail City. Then she turned to him. We'll walk to where Daddy's waiting. I'll leave the horse there. All right. Miss McCracken, it's dark up here. Are you sure you know where you're going? Yes. Daddy said... Oh, there it is. See? There's a lantern burning up among the trees. Oh, yeah. I see horses, too. But where's your father? Around somewhere. Marion led the way between the trees to an opening where a lighted lantern rested on a tree stump. Easy, no, easy. As Haskell stopped, she stepped to one side and yelled... All right, boys. Here he is! Watch Haskell alert reached for his gun. Oh, oh. Two guns flamed from the underbrush. Oh. As the marshal fell wounded, Cliff Dexter and Django Hewitt leaped into the open, ready to shoot again. But two shots rang out from above. Both outlaws hit, grabbed their arms as their guns fell to the ground. At the same moment, the marshal, writhing on the ground, used his good arm to fire. Django Hewitt fell dead. Then the marshal collapsed. Marion Leslie, panic-stricken, dashed toward her horse as a masked man emerged from the bushes into the perimeter of light. Stop where you are. The Lone Ranger fired over her head. Oh, don't shoot. Stop. Please don't kill me. Then get back here and fast. A masked man. What do you want? Pick up the guns your partners, Cliff and Django, dropped. Now, throw them here. There you are. Django. Django's dead. He deserves to be. So do you for leading Haskell into this trap. I didn't know they were going to shoot him. They said they'd merely hold him here. Forget the explanations. Here's Silver. In response to the Lone Ranger's whistle, the great horse Silver emerged from the underbrush. The Lone Ranger took a medical kit from his saddlebag. Then, as Marion Leslie assisted him, he began to treat the wounded lawman. There. It's good your pals didn't get better shots at him. Luckily, he's not too badly wounded. You come too soon. I, I'm glad. The Lone Ranger treated Cliff Dexter's wound and left the unconscious man as Marshal Haskell revived. Marshal, how do you feel? Uh, I'm all right. 
You, the Lone Ranger. It was you who shot and saved my life. Where did you come from? The Lone Ranger, who had given help to Marshal Haskell in an earlier day, told of trailing the outlaws and Marion Leslie. The girl, between sobs, told of her part in the conspiracy against the lawman. She concluded... And Cal told me that they didn't want Marshal Haskell in town while they were robbing the bank. Oh, I say it. They said Cliff and Jango would hold you here. Oh, never mind that. What's this about robbing a bank? The girl, still frightened, told what little she knew. And the holdup will take place sometime after the bank opens this morning. That's at 10 o'clock. I'll be able to get back there before then. I'm well enough to ride. I'm going with you. Good. Miss, uh, who's the man they call the boss? I, I don't know. I swear I don't. Luckily, Tonto's trailing your pal, Cal Bentley. Unless something went wrong, he'll have followed Bentley to the boss's home. Let's carry Dexter down the relay station. We'll tell them what's happened and then leave here camp. <laughs> They found Toto at the camp. The Indian told the trailing Bentley and... Kimasabi, me find out where him go when him ride to house of man, him call boss. Did you learn the man's name? No, but me see him through window and me know where house is. Did you learn anything else? Ah, me follow crook to hideout, then me ride back here. Him still there with plenty more crooks. Come on, Toto, we're going to both those places after one more stop. Dr. McCracken's home. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. Come on, Phil. Dr. McCracken was astounded when he heard what had happened. He forgot his initial curiosity about the masked man as he said to Haskell, Marshal, I'm, I'm glad you're alive. I can't understand it, though, how those crooks knew you were coming. I told no one about... I... Wait, I take that back. I told one man, but he's a member of the council, a solid citizen. What's his name, Doctor? Galt. Hugo Galt. But Hugo wouldn't... He couldn't be involved in anything dishonest. Well, perhaps not. But listen, Doctor. Tonto, describe the place where you trailed Cal Bentley, also the man he met. Tonto gave a brief but complete description. But, yes, that's Hugo Galt's house. The man you described is Gall, too. Then him boss. Me sure. Why, it's incredible. Perhaps, Doctor, but we'll make sure before Marshal Haskell takes steps against him. Or oh, uh, what time is it? Uh, let me see. 8.15. May I suggest, then, that you work fast? If you'll swear in your new Marshal... What? I'm taking the job, Doctor. Don't what? be surprised. Then get him a posse and go to the hideout with Tonto. Miss Leslie and I have other things to do. Me? You said you'd do anything to atone for your part in this thing... Did you mean it? Certainly I meant it. Do you know where Hugo Galt's ranch is? Yes, but like the doctor said, I can't believe I'm it. I'm not asking you to believe anything. You can help prove the man's guilt or innocence. The Lone Ranger briefly outlined a plan which the others accepted. Tonto would lead a posse to the crook's hideout, while the masked man and Marion Leslie went on to Hugo Galt's home. Come on, sir. As the Lone Ranger and Marion left the doctor's home... The marshal, the doctor, and Tonto set out to arouse the known good citizens of Trail City. Get off! Get off! Hugo Galt was surprised when he heard a loud pounding on his door shortly before nine o'clock. He was doubly surprised when he opened the door and the girl pushed her way inside excitedly. Mr. Galt, I'm Marion Leslie. Marion Leslie? Uh, I don't think I know. I'm Cal Bentley's friend, you know. I was with Cliff Dexter and Django Hewitt at the relay station this morning when they shot Marshal Haskell. They, they got him? Yes, but something's wrong. You must go to the hideout at once and see Cal before he and the gang set out to rob the bank. What? How do you know about that? Why should I Those be... are my orders. You must go there at once. I must go now. Wait. Come back here, you. Miss Lucy. Don't go. Tell me. I can't. Steady, boy. You go and see Cal. Get up. Mary and Leslie rode away from the ranch and went out of sight, galloped her horse off the road to a grove of trees where the Lone Ranger waited. Oh, oh boy, won't you? I, I did what you said. And he's the man, all right, I'm sure. Then let's move to a spot where we'll be able to see the ranch house. All right, Silver. Get up. Oh, 
Oh, look. He's leaving the house, running toward the stable. Yes, the fish has taken the bait. Get ready. We must follow him. Oh, Silver, who? That cabin must be the hideout. He's gone inside. Yes. Oh, there's Tonto. He must have led the marshal's men here. Yes, there they are. Miss, you stay here with the horses. Easy, steady. Be quiet. Cal Bentley and the outlaw gang were astonished when Hugo Galt, white-faced and quivering, entered the hideout cabin. Cal protested. But you're crazy. I didn't send Marion for you. I haven't seen her since last night. Then why'd she come to me less than 15 minutes ago and tell me you wanted to see me? She said something was wrong. Is yes, there? No. We're getting ready to ride into town now. We have the plans you gave us. Uh, I don't understand this. She said they'd kill Haskell. Not killed, Galt. Shot. Look, hey, look, look at the window. A mash man. <laughs> Before the surprise crooks could reach for their guns, the Lone Ranger and the men of the posse began to shoot through the cabin windows. The crooks were caught in the crossfire. Some fell wounded. Others ran to the door. As they opened the door, a fresh burst of shots sent them scurrying back. Hugo Galt whimpered. Kill! They'll kill us all. Don't let them. Surrender! Yeah, we haven't a chance. Hold it, boys. Hold it. The crooks dropped their guns and lifted their hands above their heads. All right, out there. We give up. We give up. Dr. McCracken and Jack Haskell led the posse through the door. Hugo Galt gasped. Dr. McCracken, you're here too? Yes, I send you to jail. Keep your hands up, Hugo. Let me introduce you to Marshal Haskell. Well, Marshal, this has been a long day. Yeah, Doctor... But a great one for Trail City. Among those men we put in jail today are some of the most wanted men in the West. They'll be going to prison for a long time. Here or in some other territory. So will Hugo Galt. Now imagine him and all that money we found buried in his place. Yeah. Some of it's still in bank wrappers. Definitely connecting him with past robberies. The girl is ready to testify against Dexter and Bentley... She'll get off lightly, I hope. Oh, sure, sure she will. Without her, we couldn't have... <laughs> what am I talking about? We? Mm-hmm. He was the one. You mean the mask man? Yeah, that's right. He saved my life. He caught the girl and made her reveal the plot. Then he and Tano exposed Galt and his gang. <laughs> Why, Doctor, he did everything. And if Trail City becomes a model town from here on, and it will, believe me, it's because of him and only him, the Lone Ranger. is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Say, you ought to try Cheerios, the delicious food with go power. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Add milk, and you've got just the breakfast to start a healthy, happy day. It's real muscle-building food. Every spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. They help give you healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. So eat Cheerios. People will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. <laughs> Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. 
your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.